if you've watched our videos before and watched our videos on factoring, uh, you would see that we kind of use a couple more steps when solving our factoring, but it's only because we want to eliminate that guess and check. And a lot of the systems we used have been used on a lot of students. I'm talking hundreds of students. So it's not anything that we just made up. These are proven methods that actually do work. So um, if you've seen some of our factoring videos, we've used the X method, and um, that works very well. But now what I want to do is I want to go over what happens uh, when there is actually a number in front of the variable squared. When we have a number in front of the variable squared, uh, we're going to take one extra step, actually a few extra steps to go ahead and solve it. But again, remember, this beats guess and check. So what you want to do is you always want to remember the umbrella method. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a little umbrella here. And the reason why we want to do that is because it's going to help us solve the problem. So what I do is I multiply and I write this out. So 3 times negative 10. And then I put an arrow down. So as you can see, it kind of looks like an umbrella. It's an easy way for us to remember to use the umbrella method. What we do, uh, and then we can go ahead and stick with our x as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make an x here. But what the umbrella method is going to allow us to do is it's going to tell us exactly what we have to use. So first I'm going to do 3 times negative 10 because I'm going to use that sign right there. So that would be a negative 30. Good. And what this arrow is telling me to do is it's telling me to bring down the positive 13. Now you don't have to worry about the variable. Just bring down the number. So I have a positive 13 and I have a negative 30. So what now I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to ask myself what multiplies to negative 30 but adds to a positive 13. So when the signs are different, guys, when you see these signs as different signs, this is a negative and this is a positive, you're always going to have one positive and one negative. That's going to work every single time. Don't overthink it. Again, just trust me on this. When the signs are different, one number is going to be a positive number and the other one's going to be a negative number. So what I have to ask myself is what number actually multiplies to negative 30 but adds to a positive 13? Well, a lot of times people say, okay, well, you know, I get this problem with my students. 3 times 10 is equal to 30. And then if I add 3 plus 10, that also equals 13. Because remember, it has to, the two numbers have to add to 13 but multiply to a negative 30. But the problem is we have this negative. So if we did, let's say, negative 3 times 10, we would get our negative 30. But if we did a negative 3 plus 10, it wouldn't give us 13. It wouldn't give us a positive 13. It would give us a positive 7. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that off. So we have to find something that multiplies to negative 30 and adds to a positive 13. Now, this might be the hardest part of the problem. And it's not really hard. It's just you have to take the time to figure out the numbers. Other than that, the whole process is just very simple, and once you start using it and follow the steps, you can do it with every single factoring problem, as long as it's factorable. So let's try, um, let's see here, uh, well, what if we did negative 15 times 2? That would give me a negative 30. Perfect. So let's do negative 15 plus 2. Well, that gives me a negative 13. I'm really close, right? But I don't actually have the exact number. I have to have this be a positive. So what if I switch this around? What if I did negative 2 times 15? So all I did was just change the sign on one of the numbers. I made the negative 2. I made it a negative 2 versus the positive 2 like I did here. And that gives me a negative 30. Good. And then what if I did negative 2 plus 15? Well, that gives me a positive 13. So those are the numbers that I'm actually looking for, because remember, negative 2 times 15 gives me a negative 30, a negative 2 plus 15 gives me my positive 13. Remember what I told you guys? You don't have to overthink it, but now I know that there's going to be one sign that's going to be a positive, or one number is going to be a positive, and the other number is going to be a negative. Good. Now, if you've watched the other videos, you would say, okay, I'm done, right? Well, actually, not in this case. Not when we use the umbrella method. And I'm trying to go slow for you guys so you can follow along and understand. And if you have to, I recommend watch the video over again. It's not going to hurt you. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a box. And you guys can follow along and make a box with me. And remember this, okay? 
I'm going to go, well, actually, let me erase this really quick. I'm going to make the box a little lower. But I'm going to go, remember, remember what I'm saying. Far left, top left, far right, bottom right, okay? Far left, top left, far right, bottom right. Okay, that means when we're going with this original problem, the far left number, which is our three, I put here. So far left, top left corner of the box. Then the negative 10, that's our far right number. Far right, bottom right, okay? Remember that. Far left, top left. Far right, bottom right. Perfect. Those have to be there. Now these numbers that are in here, these numbers, it doesn't matter where you put them. I'm going to go ahead and put the 15 here, and then I'm going to put the negative 2 here. Honestly, it does not matter. I could have switched it around. But as long as my far left is in the top left and my far right is in the bottom right, I'm good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the G, C, F of the top row. So I'm going to take the greatest common factor of here, okay? So I have 3 and 15. What's the greatest common factor of 3 and 15? You have to know your rules in order to do this. But it would actually be 3. Why? Because 3 goes into 3 and 3 goes into 15. Good. That checks out. So once I do that, it's all downhill from here, guys. Watch this. Then you divide. How many times does 3 go into 3? One time. Perfect. How many times does 3 go into 15? Five times. Now I divide this top number up here into these. 1 goes into 3 3 times, and 1 goes into negative 2 negative 2 times. Now this is how you know the problem works. So if you're taking a test, this is a good way of checking. How many times the next number, the number to the right of it, will also give us the same answers here? How many times does 5 go into 15? 3 times. How many times does 5 go into negative 10? Negative 2 times. So this will work every single time as long as the problem is factorable. So perfect. So now I know I actually have that as my answer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the problem. So we're dealing with the variable y. And you notice I don't put any of the variables in there because it's too much thinking. Now I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to say a y goes here. And then since this is a positive 5, I'm going to put a plus sign right there. And then I know that the y goes here and it's a negative. Two, so I'm going to keep it. So now, let's go ahead and write our parentheses, because that's factoring. You're going to have to put it in a set of parentheses like this. I have 1y plus 5. Well, in math, we don't write the 1 there, so we put y plus 5. And then we have 3y, and if it's a negative, you don't have to put a sign, because it's already there for you. 3y minus 2. And that's actually your answer. So you went ahead and factored it. Now, if you have them switched around and you did it and it comes out 3y minus 2, so if it comes out like this, 3y minus 2, and then the other one is y plus 5, that's still okay. You're still fine. That's still the same answer, so you're not going to get it wrong on a test.